Well, good evening and welcome to another edition of How to Rock the Stage. I'm the Trigger, Rich Bontrager. Welcome back for another night of learning media presentation skills. It's all about you, your brand authority, your voice, your presence, the way you communicate, what you're selling, and it all comes down to brand authority, your messaging, and there's nothing better than the power of podcasting right now. Podcasting is exploding. It's one of the number one ways to communicate you, your brand, your message, your offerings, your personal story, your values. It's all there. And tonight we're going to get into six amazing steps to help you launch successfully. But before we do that, we got to tell you about what's coming up the next two weeks as Rock the Stage is always here every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. We go live August 31st. Can you believe summer's gone? Come on. Robert Robin Stern will be my guest coming up, and it's going to be the Google Guru. How much of the Google products and services do you use? I use it extensively. So he's going to get in and teach us more about how to elevate it and use our brand authority through Google better and better. And then coming up on September 7th, it's Miley Calmer. It's going to be about networking like a pro. She's going to give us seven secrets to get business from networking. I know we all network. I know we're all on cause. But sometimes you just don't know the best etiquette, the best way to come across. So that's what we're going to do with Miley coming up on September the 7th. But tonight, it's the six steps to launching your brand podcast. And Russ Johns is going to be our guest tonight. He believes that you have the opportunity to be seen, be heard, and build authority. He also believes that everyone has a gift, a mission, and a value. Sometimes we need to help in creating our message with words, images, audio, video. Let's face it, it's not always easy. In fact, sometimes it's like 10,000 different details are going on with technology and we get stuck. However, technology can be overwhelming if you want to produce. It doesn't have to be overwhelming if you want to produce great content, publish media, and expand your brand. Tonight, Russ Johns is going to be all about that. By the way, he's passionate about connecting and developing relationships and helping others that are passionate about doing the same thing. Show up. Go live, build brand authority. Here's one of my newest friends, Russ Johns. Good evening, Russ. Great to see you tonight. Hey, Trigger. I am, I am excited about this. I am, I am really uh, passionate about what we're doing and who we're helping and how we can help with content creation and podcasting. It's just an amazing opportunity. It's an amazing world we live in right now. That's all I get to say. It, it really is because growing up, it was all network. It was all everyone else got to do that, and we got to watch what they got to do. Now, as I tell people, and I'm sure you tell them the same thing, you can be your own media empire. You literally can be on multiple platforms, multiple ways, and tell your brand story. Isn't this amazing? Well, I've been teaching this since uh, 2015 that you are the brand. You are the media. You have the ability. I, I used to run an organization in Houston called Future Media Association. And I went to, I taught workshops at university and podcast movement and talking about the evolution of how podcasting is moving into everyday life. And, you know, there are, there are people out there that haven't yet discovered podcasting. However, we'll, we'll find those and inform them individuals <laughs> as, as, as well, you know, so it's like, it's just, just a matter of time. Don't forget tonight throughout our conversation, the first half of the show, we'll be talking with Russ. And then second half of the show, we're going to take you backstage and you're going to ask Russ your own questions. So take notes. The Q&A is always open. The chat room is always open. We want you to participate, but especially the second half of the show is just for you. Russ, people are going to ask me right away. So let's just get this out of the way. You have a pirate <laughs> flag hanging behind you. It was one of the first things I asked you when you and I first met. Yeah. Tell us about why you have that. I, I, I absolutely love this. And it takes me back to my younger days, too. Well, Trigger, there's a, a story behind that, as you know, and you, you've heard the story. However, a lot of people may not realize that uh, in the early days of radio and the FCC, and actually still to this day, there's regulations that require you to have a license to broadcast on a frequency in AM or FM bands, any kind of any kind of frequency. So you have to have a license. And if you have uh, an opportunity, you can actually create a transmitter and put it on a, 
uh, mount it. You can mount it anywhere, and you can actually broadcast signals without a license. and And those individuals are considered pirates, pirate broadcasters. So the pirate broadcast and the pirate syndicate is a uh, a nod to the people that are fitting outside the box and being their own media and actually stepping inside and creating what they want to create when they want to create it. They don't need a producer. They don't need an engineer. They don't need a, a GM and, and somebody telling them when the schedule is and where the, where the uh, advertisements need to be placed or anything like that. You have the authority to do it. Go out and do it. Well, and, and the fun thing now is before you get fined, so people were like yeah. offshore doing it and they were, they were moving. I mean, it was a moving target. Now yeah. we get to legally do this through the power of podcasting and streaming TV content, which I hang my head on very heavily. So yeah. it, it's a brave new world, but it's still great to be a pirate sometimes, isn't it? Well, if you take the mentality that you can you can fit outside the box and you can do something a little a little not normal, if you will, whatever that means. The, the reality is, is that you can make up your own rules, just like a pirate. You know, you can go where you want, do what you want. There's a lot of digital nomads nowadays. There's a lot of gig economy people. You know, you and I are both orphans of the corporate economy and uh, corporate orphans. And, and with that being said, we're recreating exactly what we want to do. And so that's part of the, that's part of the mentality of being a a pirate. And the, the other thing that I do is my mission is to help more people help more people. And, and my taglines are kindness is cool and smiles are free. And it goes with the same reasoning. It's like being a pirate doesn't mean angry, mean, and, you know, pillaging. It, it means that you're just, it's a mindset. So I really, I really adhere to that uh, mindset and continue to help others join in. So we're going to start with a mindset question here. First of all, Podcasting's grown. I mean, it's on iHeartRadio. It's everywhere now. Is it mm -hmm. too late to get into the game and get into podcasting? No, absolutely not. And here's why. And we were talked about this earlier on our uh, our uh, flash mob <laughs> episode earlier today. Is the reality is is that a lot of podcasters start. And they're not necessarily dialed into the expectations and understanding of what, it's, what it requires to stay on top of it. And so the majority of 80% of podcasters, you know, they get to episode 10 and they say, nobody's listening. Nobody's doing anything. Why am I doing this? And they, and they die. So there's, there's a lot of podcasts out there that have 10 or less episodes. 80%. Don't make it to number 10, by the way. Just, just so we throw the number. 80% do not make it to 10 episodes. And we're going to talk about some of the reasons why that failed to launch is there. And hopefully we're going to help them go further with it tonight, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's my goal. So before we dive into the deep, meaty stuff, let's get the question out here for everyone tonight. I want you to participate with our live audience here tonight. And here's the poll question for you. What has kept you from launching a podcast? Is it money and resources? Is it you're unaware of maybe a great topic? Maybe you fear that, or you don't have the confidence for it, maybe. Maybe you don't think you have the time for it. Or maybe it's you're, you need some coaching, which is nothing wrong with any of those things. Cast your vote. We're going to come back to it later on. Russ and I are going to keep on trucking through our conversation. We've got a lot to get through tonight. So explain the difference between live streaming and podcasting. I, I always tell people podcasting is audio. Mm -hmm. I'm doing TV more with the video, but what's your definition of live stream and podcasting? Well, it, the key to that un, and untangling that is live. Uh, you can actually create live audio shows, you know, cl uh, what is it, Clubhouse and some of these platforms, even LinkedIn has audio only programs and they are live that's like live radio and then live streaming is the ability and opportunity to do exactly what we're doing right now there's no net there's no security we're live if if something happens we just deal with it we're gonna we're gonna fly with the fly with the outcomes right 
podcasting a lot of times is actually, and this is what I've done over the past, is I've done a live stream and then taken that audio, processed it, and then edited it, and then put it up to a podcast host to where it's actually uh, uh, more finished, more polished, or more produced. And and that's that's the only difference really is is the level of production and the way it's processed in uh, in the podcast host at this point in time. And, and there's lots of the video lots side, of different ways you can do that. You, can, you know, you can put your intro now on video. You can put an outro now on video. There's so many post-production things you can put in there now and make it even more seamless to oh, make yeah. that transition from video to audio. It's much easier now than it was even six months ago. <laughs> it's It's amazing. When I started in podcasting, I used to actually uh, live stream high school varsity sports over AM radio with journalists and students that, you know, sports fanatics, they would go out to the high school football games or the baseball games, and they would call the games using podcasting equipment. And I would stream it and then I would catch that stream in the studio and then rebroadcast that out to the tower. And that's how, that's how I got you know, involved in podcasting in the first place is I kind of came from a different perspective. It was in the radio business. And, uh, and I could see the writing on the wall that radio was, you know, challenging because same thing we talked about earlier today. You know, you got you know, lots of newspapers going out there, only a few readers. But yeah. with a podcast, you have community, you can build a community around that and actually get some real feedback and engagement from it. So let's get into your six best ways to launch successfully. Instead of failure to launch, Russ, what's number one? What would be the number one thing to get them launched off correctly? Well, number one is the strategy. And I spend a lot of time on strategy because, um, you know, this is one thing I used to deal with uh, when managing a lot of engineers or large projects is expectation management. And setting the expectations correctly so people don't go into it thinking that it's going to be, you know, rose-colored glasses and unicorns. They have to really think about how they're approaching it and what the outcomes are. Because if you go in with just, hey, I, I just want to, I just want to do this for my own ego trip. I just want to, you know, play, you know, radio for a few days. You know, it's not really a strategy. It's, it's just your, you know, you buy some equipment. What what equipment can, do I need to buy for this? It's like you don't need to buy any equipment at, immediately. What you need to do is spend some time developing your strategy and finding out, okay, well, do you want to monetize this? Is this going to be directed toward and at your existing products? Or are you going to be talking about products that you're affiliate, affiliated with that you can actually promote? and get commission from, there's a lot of different, or are you gonna interview individuals that are gonna pay you for the promotion and the support that you're delivering and supporting them with? And there's really lots of different ways. And, and it's all about that brand authority. You wanna think this through, be the hangs and the balance of what you do with your brand authority. Absolutely. And if you don't think it through, you're not gonna make it, right? Correct. Uh, you know, if, if you don't have a plan to get anywhere, you can get anywhere, you can go anywhere. It's like, well, uh, there's a great quote, I'm sure that, uh, uh, you know, a smart person said at one point in time, it's like, if you don't have a plan, you can, anywhere will take you there. So it's really about what plan and what are your roles? What are your, what are your goals? And do you have a team or is this going to be solo? We have talked about that a lot. The more you grow this, you need to have a producer, you need to have this, you need to run of show, there's so much that gets into it. What's your second tip to help us launch properly with a successful branded podcast? Well, it's the design. Uh, I, like the, I like to think about how you set up your design. Is it in alignment with your, your existing company? Is it gonna be different? Is it, how does the look and feel? What do people see when your show comes up in the feed? Uh, what is the name, the title? the tagline, you know, what are some of the topics you're going to do? Is it going to be 
an interview style like we're doing now? Is it going to be a solo show where you're talking about topics? Is it going to be a, uh, a news program? Is it going to be highly produced or is it just going to be fire up the mic and, and, you know, hit it. So, so the design of the program, the branding of the program and what is developed from your strategy piece has to fall in line with the design. So they all come in alignment. They're all in line with your goals and uh, some of the things you want to accomplish with this, with your podcast. Now, I know one of your tips in this six hot tips to launch successfully is going to be build a community. Nina Sunday's dropped into the Q&A here. She has a podcast, but her, listen, her listeners are anonymous. She wants to know, how do you build that community? And is it like a Facebook group or what do you do? So is, is that one of your six strategies to launch successfully is a build community through the podcast? Well, <clears throat> there's, there's uh, let's, let's dive that, down that a little deeper right now because that, that can be part of the design process. There's, there's a difference between launching a show and growing a show. Ah. So, so we have to kind of separate those two skill sets out because one of the things that you can do is, you know, you can, you can create an amazing podcast and have very little uh, exposure in listeners and downloads and things like that. And then you can have a, an average podcast that gets a lot of downloads. And it's because of the effort that you've placed in the growth phase of the podcast versus the design phase of the podcast. And when we talk about podcast growth, there's a lot of strategies unique to podcast growth. And one of the things that I recommend is developing a community because like she said, there's not a lot of information coming back from the podcast about who is listening. Sometimes you can get, okay, male, female, demographics, some, a little bit of demographics. So what you have to think about is how can I create a call to action to where I can get them off the podcast and into my newsletter or into a platform that I have the ability and the authority to control. And it's not, you know, social media is great for exposure and extending the, the reach. However, you still have to be aware of, am I in control of some of these individuals and the, the conversations that I have with them or not? Anyone can gather a crowd, they say. Yeah. But what do you do with that crowd is really the trick of, and again, the podcast and the branding with the growth groups now, there's so many amazing ways to turn it into a personal relationship. We're gonna pause for a second. We're gonna come back for our next of the six steps here. But let's look at our poll results here and see what you think of this. Again, what is keeping you from doing this? And look at that, it's pretty evenly across the way, <laughs> but it's not enough time. Not enough time. What do you say to that? Uh, you know, we all have hobbies. We all have lives. We're all busy. And, and I totally have empathy for that. I, I've done over a thousand live streams uh, and, and I appreciate the amount of time it takes. And I appreciate all of the effort that it takes in order to accomplish that goal. And it's really about what your, what your goals are for the outcomes and do they outweigh the time that it takes and is it a priority where does it get prioritized in your in your day-to-day -day activity and that's part of that planning strategy conversation of how this is going to fit in and is yeah. it once a week is it once a month that's all part of the intentional launch process um so what's what's your next point here what's what's the next way to successfully launch well the 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 next one is um developing an intro and outro now the reason i the reason I want to spend time on an intro and outro is it allows you to actually include a call to action or build an awareness to a specific community that you're attracting. So if, if you have an opportunity to actually put that in your intro and outro, that's one more task that you don't have to think about when you're going live. That's, a, that's an opportunity that you can actually have that batched out in place 
and you don't have to consider it. It's not another thing you have to do. So you can actually insert some things in there that will help your audience say, is this for me? Or is, is this for somebody I know that I can share it with? And, uh, and that's a strategy that you can use to help you generate more uh, interest and also community uh, activity around that. Well, also that professional intro outro is like Brian, someone else doing that voice, get someone else to do the voice. They will do the intro and outro and they are raising your brand authority, not you bragging on yourself, but right. literally establishing you as the expert with a great intro and a closing outro, correct? Correct. And, and it doesn't so have important. to be elaborate. It does not have to be elaborate. However, it goes back to the number one fact that people are not starting in the, in the, the poll not enough time. And if you optimize some of these processes, you'd be surprised at how much efficiency you can create by creating processes and systems. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> What's our next great point to help them launch successful here? Uh, one of the things I cover on podcast, your brand is, uh, and, and I have a six day mini course out there that uh, we'll be sharing later on, but Installation. Now, the reason I actually talk about this is uh, everybody's starting at, at zero mm -hmm. for the most part. They may have some equipment, they may have some gear, and they may have questions. It's like, I don't know what to do next. I don't know what to do with this thing I got. And so I talk about installation for the benefit to clear up what is necessary and what is needed to actually create a, a viable show consistently and if you can set up a studio or have a have a workflow that is easy to access easy to to fire up and get going that's one more thing you don't have to think about it is hit the switch and go live and record it and then you can do with it what you want and so installation and some of the systems that you use maybe for booking guests or you know actually hosting your uh your podcast or how it's distributed. All of those things are elements that you need to consider when you're setting it up. So you don't have to think about it going down the road. And that whole idea of going live and repurposing is huge. And in fact, one of the best trends right now is people are thinking recording is kind of getting past say anyone can record and post it. The mm -hmm. trick is go live, show that you're going off the cuff, show you're having some fun. Russ and I did that earlier today. The live is really grabbing people, and then you can repurpose it. So don't miss the power of a LinkedIn Live, Facebook Live, Instagram Reels, whatever you got going on. That live stuff is great right now. Oh, and, and here's the trick is it doesn't necessarily have to have a huge audience to create longevity yeah. because that live, you can repurpose it, you can repost it, you can actually reuse it for other purposes. You can slice it up and create bite-sized pieces of everything that you need. And it's really a powerful tool that creates versatility and frees up your time. Repurpose, repurpose, repurpose. I think we're down to our final of the six. What's, what's your final tip here to help people rock this better? Launch, you know, let's, let's create a, a strategy that you can actually live with, launch with, and continue to grow with. It's, it's pretty simple. It's, it's not, Let's not overcomplicate it. A lot of a lot of hesitation comes, especially as a content creator. You think, oh, I gotta think through this, think this through, and I gotta you know design a special solution. I gotta do something extra. And you know sometimes it's just like, hey, just turn the microphone on and record it. <laughs> Get the reps in early. Just just everyone's blown it. Thirty years ago, I was horrible when I first got into broadcasting. I've come a long way. I think I've done pretty well for myself. Russ, you've been in the same area with it's the reps of turning it on and yeah. going for it. And again, I, I just talked about this recently. Once you have that long term con, uh, content, pull out the old stuff and show your early mistakes and now show where you're at. Encourage yeah. people to say try and look where you can get to. It's very powerful and it's very human, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Take off a mask and say, I suck once. Oh, well, I think about any early. musician that you listen to their first note out of any instrument wasn't the best note. And it does take practice and it does take skill. And just realize and accept that everybody that hears themselves the first time they're recorded, they don't care for it. 
the first time they see it on video, they don't care for it. However, if you have a business and you have an interest and you have any kind of thought that you might want to increase your visibility, increase your authority, and increase your business revenue, this is the quickest way, the most effective way, and the best thing that I can suggest you start doing second to none. And the great thing about what podcasting is that now, you record it once, produce it once, and you put it up through a portal, and it goes to six, seven, eight, nine, ten different outlets. It's not like you're a one-stop shop now. You're everywhere right away, right, Russ? Yeah. I actually did a class once uh, where I created a live stream and then repurposed it to, to 100 locations. I mean, what's, what's the return on your investment of being uh, found on 100 locations in SEO? And, you know, just building a brand. And that changes that whole time question. Now it's like, wow, my time now becomes valuable because I'm everywhere. And the lead magnet becomes better and better the more you learn how to yeah. do it. We're coming up on our halfway time pretty soon. We're going to let you come in and ask the questions. Um, Nina was asking through the Q&A again. I, have a uh, uh, I was approached on LinkedIn from someone, I think from India, where they'll get uh, 1,000 downloads from the USA to my podcast for 60 bucks. Everyone's getting those emails, right, Russ? Yeah. Everyone's getting, mm -hmm. I can elevate you. Do yeah. we need to spend a lot of money to do this or can we learn to do it ourselves? Here's my, here's my, um, here's my answer to that question specifically is that if your ego is telling you you need numbers and you want to invest money and, uh, you know, send it my way, I'll burn it for you as well. The reality is, is if you want to grow your business and you want to book calls and you want to sell your services, build relationships, not numbers. Because, you know, you could get big numbers over time with the right with the right strategy but you can't you can't buy relationships no. so so take that to the bank wherever you want to go and just realize that you can buy numbers however next week those numbers are gone because they'll just move on to doing something else nina says perfect answer thank you very much by the way and again <laughs> Even if you got a thousand viewers right away and you built relationships, you're not ready for it yet. Honestly, you yeah. have to build into this to make the mechanisms get ready to handle a good crowd. It takes We're systems. Gonna, yeah, which goes back to your earlier point. <laughs> you have to have the systems to do it Full when circle. you become the new Seth Rogen. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna drop in your uh, your uh, social media, Russ. How can they find you? What's the best way to connect with you? Uh, the easiest way to connect with me is uh, on LinkedIn. I, I hang out there the most. Uh, you can go to russjohns.com. And, uh, and if you want to book a call with me, bookrust.com. It's the easiest way to, to approach. And we I'm open to connecting gonna... on LinkedIn. So he does have a special offer. We're going to put that in the end of the show. You got to stick around the end. Because we've got yeah. plenty of good stuff to come in. But stick around for that. And of course, we do want to remind you that coming up every week, we are back here at 7 o'clock Eastern time for How to Rock the Stage. Media presentation, branding is so important. You are the brand, as we've been talking about tonight. I want to help you do that. I have a special package that I've got now called the Spotlight. The Spotlight is focused on you and your brand authority. It's not really about what you sell. It's about who you are and yeah. how you got there. So I would love to help you learn how to be that, do that through the Spotlight video. Contact me, rich at richbontrager.net, or go to rockthestagemedia.com. And don't forget, coming up next week, we have, uh, we'll be back again, 7 o'clock Eastern time, and we're going to dive into it again with Robin Stern, the Google guru, and we're going to help you elevate more of your brand and your messaging through Google. Don't forget, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, it's How to Rock the Stage every Wednesday night.